All right, guys, today I've got an exciting video for you. I'm gonna put my own backhand on blast, show you some of the issues that I've been having over the past 15, 20 years or so. And I'm gonna have my own tennis lesson with a good friend of mine, Slavi, great tennis coach. And he's gonna be seeing if you can help me fix some of the issues that I have. I think it's gonna hopefully help me with my backhand, but it's also gonna help you with yours too. So your stroke is already done. Everything you do is for this, right? So boom, so that's, you're already finished. So it's gotta be arms, freeze the hips, shoulders, Yes, hips. yes. So there's two motivating factors that are causing me to try and improve my backhand. One is I pride myself on having good stylish, good fundamental strokes, good kinetic chain to help the players that I work with on court and players online that are watching me and learning from from not just the things I say, but how I demonstrate certain strokes. So my slice backhand, my forehand, my volleys, my serve, pretty happy with. I don't often show my two-handed backhand because even when it works for me, it's not something that I would recommend anyone copying because I get my arms locked and there's just some weird stuff going on right now. So that's really motivating me to sort of improve this stroke. Number two is this summer, I'm gonna be traveling around the country with Nitsan, a division one player plays number one for USF. He's been featured on my channel a lot, so most of you will be familiar with him. But we're gonna travel across country from California to Vermont, working on his game every day, getting him ready for the Pro Tour. And actually, if you guys go to the description below, there's gonna be a link to follow this journey and to see some of the content that I'm gonna be producing that's not gonna be on YouTube. So go check that out. But yes, I wanna get my backhand ready for him. I'm not gonna be working with a lot of players this summer, just him really, and I wanna be able to hit with him, right? I don't wanna let him down by shanking every other backhand. So I wanna be able to give him some good hitting practice, and that's another really strong motivating factor for me to get my backhand together. So before we get started, I'm just gonna give you a bit of a background story on myself and my backhand, give you a few good excuses. But I grew up in England, indoor courts, really fast, outdoor astroturf, indoor carpet course. So everything I played on was just really fast and the ball was coming really low. Also, people hit with eastern flat forehands because there wasn't really any benefit of hitting heavy topspin. So we didn't really get high balls. So I'm very comfortable down here hitting the ball, but when it gets up high, I've just developed some bad habits where right now I'm just kind of bouncing it off my left, a locked left arm and I'm kind of hitting like this. I don't know why things just kind of develop and evolve not always for the best. But that's kind of where I'm at and that's what I'm trying to fix. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helps with your backhand. Talk to you soon. Your stroke should already be done by the time you get to here, right? This is like your strike. So your stroke is already done. Everything you do is for this, right? So boom. So that's, you're already finished. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you, so my kinetic, like My kinetic chain is right now is Hips, yeah. arm. It seems like you're hit. trying to hit the ball after you've hit it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not good. So it's got to be arms, freeze the hips, shoulders. Yes, hips. yes. It's not bad. I think it's playing coaching. I'm always just looking down the court. So I'm always like here. Yeah, maybe that's. You know? Yeah, I got to play it at the side of me. And then what you're saying is, I play it at the side, and now I'm like. Yeah. So I got to hit, have that yes. rotate my shoulders. Yeah. Sink into your rib cage, sink down into your rib cage, allow it to turn with the arms. I think you know what to do. You just, no, watch you're just this. Gonna... That's better. That's, that's one of your best. All right. I got to get my right eye on this ball the side of me. No, you're still leaning. Whenever you do this, I know you're gonna hit a bad backhand. Whenever you do this, look. Whenever you get yourself, your upper body leaned into it like this, I already know it's going, it's, you have no chance. You gotta generate that body weight on the back leg, right? And then you're transitioning as you're hitting. If you're already leaning forward and your upper body's already like this, what kind of chance do you have of linking this? Structure. <clears throat> Better. 
It's not awful. Late. Stretched, stretched out a little bit, leaned in a little bit. Yeah, I think the issue is my arms are the last thing, last thing to the party, right? Like my hands are, even though they feel early, well, they're actually late because it's, yeah, and they need that. to be the first thing. Yeah, the racket head needs to be the first thing in. I might want it like right here yes. instead of here. Right. So you, you know what to do conceptually, you just need to find it. And it's, it's tough to find because it's a new contact point and those are the worst, the hardest to change is just the contact point. But you have to change the contact point. Without that, it's not gonna work. You're gonna be doing wristy stuff. Right? Yeah, right there. That was good. No, you're leaning in. Better. At least you kept it on the right, on the left leg. Yeah. Okay. And then transition the weight through a little if bit. If I keep my one more, if I keep my balance on my left leg longer. Yeah. It does seem to. Yeah, sense, you, you sense do, me a little bit and you get You do the better arms. when you don't overcommit on the front leg. You got to keep it on the back. And then. Uh, you can have at least some kind of weight transfer there. Okay. Oh, so far in front. I feel like Jim Courier. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> uh, that's not what he feels like, though. No. <laughs> Yeah. Does that look more sideways? Yeah, it looks better. Uh. So what I've discovered through Slavi's coaching and through watching you is how, yeah, I have too much kinetic chain on the front of this shot, right? Yeah. And from here, it's, it's I'm kind of done at that point. Everything sort of rotates together. Whereas you kind of, th you still got the kinetic chain, right? You're still turning, you're still using your shoulders, but you let the arms move and then the body catches up, right? Make sense? Yeah. And, and you get a lot of power because you, you stopped your shoulders and you stopped your hips to allow that, the arm to fire and then they catch exactly, up rather yeah. than me just rotating like a spinning top. So how does golf get to this? <laughs> Funnily enough, my golf coach, I mean, I had like three lessons was telling me the same thing. That what you need to do is as I come in here, I tend to just keep everything moving. Mm. So if you want to hit a great golf shot as you come in, he was telling me to freeze my sternum, allow the arms to pass, and then catch right. up. Right, so it, it, it's almost a, it's around you, but it's not around you. It's not like you're hitting around something, but. Well, sort of, but let me see if I can do one here. So I got to freeze the body. It's like, I was doing the same thing. I had all this kinetic chain like into the ball, but then none after. And you don't get any power like that. Similar right? so, to my forehand? Yeah, we can get, we can start talking about the forehand with this, but this is like your backhand where when you come in here, you got to freeze, allow the club that, oh my God. <laughs> Stop power. Runs. But when you come in here, it's freezing the body, allowing the arms to move and then having it catch up. And that's just like the backhand, right? You come in here, oh, the kinetic chain's still happening. Then you let the arms move. Yeah, and yeah. Then you have the rest of the rotation after. Yeah, because it does feel like I rotate into it, but the arms end up passing the body. Yeah. This summer, me and Nitsan are going to be traveling around the country for 10 weeks in my RV. We're going to be working on his game, making some technical adjustments and trying to get him ready for the pro tour. I think you guys are going to really enjoy seeing how we reshape Nitsan's forehand and his serve in particular. Seeing how we can create an overlap from the coaching court to competition so that he can start to execute in tough situations. And then go and test it against players all around the country from California to Vermont. If this sounds interesting to you, I want you to go to the description below and click the link. That's going to give you access to a lot more of the content that we're going to be producing over the next three months.